Hello, hello, take two. Hey guys, we're going live with Carlos Alas Rocky. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but we are back and hopefully, hopefully we will uh, be able to reconnect with Carlos. So um, can you guys give me a thumbs up or let me know if you can hear me? Um, so glad to see everybody jumping back on. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Let's jump back on with Yay. Okay. Your buds are connected. Hello, hello. Hi. You can hear We're me back. now? Yes. We're back. Yes. So, yeah, hopefully that won't happen again. But if it does, we'll just um, jump off real quick and jump yeah. back on. I just wanted to make sure I posted that because there was so much good stuff in the first three minutes. I didn't want oh, to um, lose it. So. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go back and add captions later. But anyways, um, we're talking about the Scottish accent. The Scottish dialect and the Spanish dialect, I'll go back and practice by watching stuff, Duolingo for Spanish I do every day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, me gusta la cartera roja. You know, so I make sure that I got the vowels right. And it's all, it's all about how you move your mouth to make sounds, to get the vowel sounds right. So if you know, yeah. world in American English is like it's all over the world, but it's got it's all over the world, world, world. and world. and it's just it's a visual for all of us. I think it's a visual reference. If we get a visual reference of somebody doing a voice, it's how Jim Meskimen and Josh Robert Thompson and Ross Marquand and Melissa Villasenor. It's how they all do their impressions. They get that visual. I think first, and then you know, if you're gonna do, you're gonna do De Niro, it thinks you gotta make the face. It, ha it helps, you know. <laughs> it really helps. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, oh, when I when I do Dr. Fauci, oh, of course I'm gonna start from how I remember him, very small at the podium, and uh, deliberate, but it's his physical size that helps me to recreate that sound so yeah yeah that's so interesting because also you know if you're starting with the physical it kind of prevents you from getting in your head or overthinking mm -hmm. different choices because you're just you're, you're coming from the movement yeah it's just a zen thing you, you're just into it you're just yeah. pretending right yeah do you uh, do you coach as well i do coach um I actually coach more on camera than I do voiceover. I, I don't have the curriculum per se, although I've gone two or three times to Voice Tracks West with uh, Samantha yeah. Paris uh -huh. in, uh, in uh, Sausalito, California. And I've had fun coaching. And uh, a drill that I've done in the classes is where I take two disparate types of actors, one really strong with characters and one really sort of more uh, commercial VO. And I'll have them read the same commercial copy but then what I'll do for the person that's not confident that they can come up with the create characters, I'll go imitate the other actor that you're just in the booth with doing that character that they just did and do your best to do that person. <laughs> and by doing that, they actually develop a character voice. And Billy West has famously always said that a bad impression of somebody is an original character. You know, Crocker is a mixture of a bad Richard Dreyfus mixed with a Gene Wilder to give. Mixed with a bunch of <laughs> burns. Yes, Smithers. All in good times. And so you mix it all together. Mother, there he's. It becomes its own character. So. <laughs> that was so great. It's like a master class, a mini master class. Yeah, I, you know, I, I'm sure you do some tricks as well. You see it, you feel it, you physicalize it. And you go, yeah. that voice reminds me of the lady that used to be working the cleaners or whatever, or my teacher. So I know where I'm going with this, you know. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure you. As as you can, yeah, anchor into somebody that that you're familiar with. You know their energy. You can feel their energy, and you just yeah, yeah it, it's it's just anchors you right in versus trying to get in it into it from like an intellectual standpoint with your pen and and paper and making your notes and marking everything up. Sometimes I feel like that just gets me too in my head. Yeah. I just did a session too where I had to pull back on the accent where I thought they liked it on the on the on the callback and they're like, oh, yeah. pull back just a little bit, and that's where the voice acting comes in as we know how to refine things on the spot. We're like studio musicians where they're like, okay, take this beat, speed it up, make it a backbeat, 
add the rhythm there, boom, refine it a little bit faster, and now go. And we're able to make decisions on the fly, you know? Yeah, like vocal DJs, you know? Like, mix it back. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just spinning, um, just spinning vocal records, character. Yeah. Records. So many people saying hello to everybody out there that's a fan yes. of both of us. Thank you for joining. We, uh, we oh. appreciate you for sure. It, it is Somebody so said, much Walden. more fun when people are on the live. Yeah. Yes. Thank you Somebody, so much. Uh, Walden was another Australian character I did for Handy Manny. Oh, yes, my dino bones. Oh, Wobsy, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've lost my dino bones. <laughs> yeah. So great. Now, in addition to voice acting, you've also been on the screen. You've done quite a lot of on camera as well, perhaps most notably Reno 911. Yeah. Um, are you, is that how? What percentage would you say um, that works into your career? Is it, is it fifty percent or is it? There was a point where Rena, when we were filming the seasons on Mass, was fifty fifty at least, yeah. and now uh, it's on HBO Max, it's on Paramount Plus, it's on Roku. Yeah. Uh, then another season is going to come out on Paramount Plus. We're about to uh, film a little special for them. That's been announced. That it's a little forty four minute movie. Ah. So that's nice. the gift that keeps on giving, but I would say a majority yeah. of my work now, outside of my film, which we'll talk about, has been voiceover yeah. and, and continues to be voiceover. And, uh, but I, I, I've done a bunch of, uh, I've done about three or four Adam Conover live stuff and then it's uh -huh. ca cartoon as well. I, uh, my preference is always it's relative to the project, you know, because yeah. you could be doing a voiceover thing where it's like a video game and you're chewing your voice up and you don't really like, you don't love the session. Mm. and you could be on set somewhere waiting around all day going well this was but i i don't know i i i suppose i, I love them both the same but again it's relative to the project because there were days on reno where we'd be in the trailer all day and then all right we just need you to do this little thing at the end of the day or, the, or there would be one where you'd get the whole bunch of scenes and it's super fun yeah. so it just varies but I love one of my favorite. I love Rocco's Modern Life because that was my first and Camp Laszlo because it was yeah. Joe Murray again. And it was Jeff Bandit, who's brilliant, was added to the cast. Steve Little, uh, Jill Talley. But Rocco was a revere. But I love, love, love Fairly Odd Parents because Butch was just such a tough yeah. love dad. And you had Tara Strong and you had Darren Norris and Suzanne Blakesley and you had Gray Delisle. And then later on, we had Kari Walgren and Eric Bowser and Kevin Michael Richardson. And Rob Paulson and the cast would just grow. But I would sit there and watch Jeff Bennett do his cat man. And it was a dead on Adam West. And I'm I'm just cracking up about how brilliant this cast is, you know. And that yeah. was just fun. It's just like it's symphonic, right? You get a part of a group cast and it's people are going nuts and it's it's a beautiful thing. So Did you guys have a lot of improv opportunity on that show? We would riff, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Brooks would go, that's very funny. And I'll do it as written. All right. <laughs> you know, he was always tough love. And, but he, always, he knew the character so well. He knew a line that would work or, or didn't work. But he would let me riff with Crocker for sure. Yeah. I'd always See? had a mother here, a girlfriend here. Mother! <laughs> my cat, my girlfriend, my cat, who's my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. He would let Darren and, and Tara and Suzanne just go at it. You know, Gray, we'd all pitch in and riff a few lines, but he was a tough love guy, which was, which was kind of fun because we knew he was. He liked to, you know, bust you, yeah. your, your privates a little bit. And um, so have you heard about, I mean, what are your thoughts on the newly announced Fairly Odd Parents live action reboot? <laughs> I texted Butch right away. You know, Butch, if you need a Mr. Crocker, because unfortunately for the <laughs> reboot with Drake in Hawaii with, uh, with Jason Alexander, they got they hired a Canadian actor who did quite well playing Crocker. But I was jealous. It's like, well, I created that character with Butch, and I know how to play him. And I'm like, I don't know this live version doesn't pick up with the Timmy Turner thing. It's a little different. But I said, uh -huh. if there's ever a Crocker, please just let me get give give me a shot at it because. I'm watching this clip, right? What yeah. was it? No, mother, quit talking about my prom. That was 35 years ago. And I'm like, wait a minute, 35 years ago? I could be Crocker. I'm the right age. <laughs> and I look like him, and I know this character inside out. Just give me a shot to play him. But you guys. Not, I'm sure whoever they get would be great. We all need to just get on board and start start tweeting that out. 
<laughs> I might have to start doing some live TikToks as a live Mr. Crocker. Going, oh yes, gosh. you've heard me on The Voice, but now I've come out. Wait, there's something in the bushes. I was picking up dog mess. And look what I found! There it is! We'll you totally should. You could do some sketches. Because it's oh weird, God, because good. you feel like, would you like to play one of your characters live? Which one of your characters would you like to play live? Oh, gosh. I think, well, it would be really funny to play Little Miss Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think I would, might more want to be Little Miss Naughty, though. <laughs> Little Miss Naughty. I'm so, I'm so drunk, can't help myself. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. you know, it's like, what, you get used to doing these voice characters, you make the most ridiculous, ridiculous faces, and then, oh, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if they translate, you have to, you'd have to re, re-engineer the character a little bit, sometimes, yeah. I just can't help myself, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it could be very fun. heavy on the eye makeup, big red yeah. lipstick, long fingernails, <laughs> exactly, but, who, you know, you know, speaking of voice actors on film, you know, Tara Strong is hard cases yeah. in Toronto. And uh, I, I made a film called Witness Infection. And the log yeah. line is when a mob boss's son uh, tries desperately to get out of an arranged marriage. Luckily, his friends in the zombie apocalypse there are, to, are there to bail him out. And <laughs> it stars Rob Belushi, who I met through Allison Bosch. And, and then I met in Rob's commercial acting workshop along with a really great improviser named Tim Stoltenberg. And a cast Rob, Tara Strong, Aaron Hayes, Gary Anthony Williams, Maurice LaMarche, Joe Reitman, wow. my friend Jill Michelle Melian, who co wrote it, my buddy Vince Don Vito, Brett Ernst, who's on Cobra Kai, plays in, you know, in the car dealership. And it was a great opportunity to, for me to be able to go, I know Tara can nail the part of Philomena, this Jersey girl is like, you leave him alone. You know, <laughs> oh, oh, you don't talk to me that way. And then Mo, Mo, we got to play Mr. Miola, who's kind of a soft, genial mob boss at five in the morning in, in Temecula and just crushing the scenes. And it was just so fun to, to give voice actors an opportunity to be on camera and be on film. And you can get it on right. video on demand. You can go to witnessinfection.com to find out where it's playing. And you can buy Wait, it. Somebody should, somebody should type that um, in the comments and we'll pin it so anybody joining in is able to, to go check it out. Yeah, so where did you get the idea to do this film? I had always loved zombie films. I'm gonna, can't, I can't see myself, but it's okay. My keyboard's in the way and I don't know how to get rid of it. I'm oh. just going to go hi. I'm going to say hi. So this is just there. Hi. I just said hi to myself. Um, I'd always love uh, zombie films. We, I love Shaun of the Dead. I always love The Sopranos. You know, everybody does that for Christopher. There's no, no better Gandolfini than Kevin Michael Richardson doing a Cleveland table read. You can YouTube that. My Uncle Donald, Tony Christopher. Me and, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name? From Angry Beavers. We used to do it all the time. Richard Horowitz. I tell you, T, you're, oh, my, yeah. you're breaking my balls here, Christopher. Hey, T, I'll go ahead and get some budget fresh. So I love the mob stuff. I love Shaun of the Dead and zombies. And I thought, I have yeah. this idea for a mob zombie film. And I called Joe Michelle Melian, who I met years ago as a comic. And we wrote it together. And we developed this story. It was more. Out here, but I think. I'm back. Sorry. No, I think we're live. Yeah. So I had this idea. I shared it with Joe Michelle Melian. We came up with a script. And we wrote a story about two witness families on witness protection. They try to continue their rivalry. I introduce poison sausage from Tablioni's, and then everything goes to kaput. Forget <laughs> about it. People start getting affected. People are biting each other. Oh, oof, ah, what a sausage. And you guys have been doing the festival circuit. Yeah, we have. We're actually going to be in October, provided we are able to maintain this streak of being healthy. We're going to be yeah. screening live at Shriekfest, LA Shriekfest, in October. Nice. Do you have a um, air date for that? Or a uh, well, date? The, the date of the festival, I'm not sure yet. It will be mid to late October, but it'll be on my carlosalasrocky.com or on my Twitter, on my Instagram. We'll definitely announce it. Um, Andy Palmer is our director, and uh, it's a fun movie. I really recommend it. It's, it's really fun, and it's great to see Mo on camera, Tara on camera. Gary Anthony Williams, of course, is always on camera and doing both. 
Um, but it's a fun little film. And so when, with casting, did you pretty much just because you'd worked with so many voice actors and those are the people you knew, you just went straight to them for casting? Yeah, we cast it off our iPhones. We just said, I'm texting this person, I'm emailing this person. And we didn't go to a casting agent. We just cast it all ourselves. I remember you were shooting that the day we did ADR on something. Was it Toy Story 4? I think so, because it's 2018. Yeah. 2018. so maybe it was actually an emoji movie. I think it was emoji. Story, like, um, and I remember, you know, just how excited you were showing me some pictures of like the makeup from set. Yes. It was amazing. Yes. Some behind the scenes. Yeah, stuff. great makeup by, by my buddy Jim Ojala, ojalafilms.com. He's fantastic. And, you know, I had met Aaron Hayes. I was on the pilot of Kevin Can Wait. I played uh, Mr. Alvarez. I had a drinking problem. So I was down at Beth Page for two weeks in, uh, uh, um, I was in Beth Page for two weeks and uh, I went, met Erin Hayes and, and when she was not uh, on the show anymore, I said, Erin, I'm doing this movie. Would you like to play a character? And she was available and we were lucky because she's so good. She's so good. Mm. So yeah, it was a blast making it. And we, it was something that I financed with my wife, myself. I was the producer, I was the writer, I was an actor. Wow. And uh, it was just a labor of love, you know, and it's and it's out there and people can see it. Yeah. And people like it. And what's next for the movie? Hopefully it after video on demand, it gets to get picked up by Amazon and it can stream on Netflix or Amazon or even yeah. iTunes for free. Uh, maybe this festival will get some eyes and ears on it. And people say, you guys got a sequel? And we go, yeah, we got an idea. So who knows? Who knows what's next? Do you, will I make my money back? I'm not sure, but you know, unfortunately, we're doing okay, and I, I made it, and, and I made something happen. And that's sometimes we do that, right? We invest in things, and yep. we just say, "Yeah, I'm going for it," and I'm proud of it. It's really, it's really good. Hundred percent. I mean, that's really why we're here, isn't it? To to express yeah. ourselves creatively and to to share and hopefully uh, affect people in a positive way, whether yeah. that's making people laugh or making them cry. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm very, I mean, I'm very impressed with um, your ability to, to make that happen. So congratulations. Thanks. Keep us posted. I would love to um, share any new news that you have about, about the um, movie. By the way, um, Fuzz Justin just shared um, the link as well as the Instagram. So everybody that's on this live, go and follow and um, you'll get the latest info from them as well. Witness infection.com witness infection great taylor a okay. uh, trailer and uh jill uh michelle Melian was instrumental in getting us bread earned and also the amazing monique coleman who plays a real fun role in that movie and it's a mix it goes places where you don't think it's going to go and it's a mixture of black exploitation Shaun of the <laughs> dead mob campy comedy love story but it all works it all works Yay. Yeah. Well, you'll see me there in October. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. By the way, isn't your birthday on Tuesday? My birthday is uh, the 20th. So I'll, the 20th. I think uh, Kari Walgren was on the 13th, along with Tom Kenny Yay. on the 13th. Lori Allen, I believe, is on the 20th. It's next Tuesday. Um, so there are a lot of us cancer Tuesday, folks. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what day it is. Let's see. Today is Wednesday the 14th. So you're right. Tuesday the 20th. I'm getting up there. Happy getting... early birthday. Thank you very much. We're going to go to the LAFC soccer game this Saturday night because I'm a season ticket holder and I love uh, football, as they call it. So we're going to go with a bu- couple of friends. And then I may join Lori Allen for a little shindig that she's going to have on the yeah. 20th. And oh, a big uh, happy birthday to my... Us. Yeah, yeah. We'll stop by. Birthday and... time birthday time so yeah it's uh, i'll be working on my birthday too because my agent said do you want to work on your birthday and i'm like yes i would love that present of working on my birthday please uh, yeah. as you know funnily enough debbie Derryberry is my birthday twin oh good when are you when is your birthday yeah when is september it september 27th there you go so we'll have to remember september that 27th. september 27th got yeah. it posted I think we got a little bit of a lag, but I think it's still okay. Um, okay. I'll try not to um, overlap you too much. Um, but I did want to switch gears a little bit mm-hmm. and just ask you if you could tell us anything about um, the new Rocco's Modern Life reboot for Nick. 
Well, the New Rockers of Modern Life reboot, uh, we record, heard me, I think we recorded in 2016. We went to Comic-Con in 2017, and then it aired on Netflix in 2019. It's called Static King, and the original cast is back. We ended the original Rocco series with them floating in space, and we pick up from there where they get sucked back down to Earth, and it's an entirely, the 21st century is a very dangerous century. They get sucked down to the 21st century, the world has changed, there's iPhones, there's sports drinks. They want <laughs> to see the fat heads again, and the fat heads no longer exist. So they have to go looking for Ralph Big Head so that Ralph Big Head can create the new fat heads. And they go off on this journey to find Ralph Big Head. And there's some surprises in there. And it's really, really well done. It's Charlie Adler, it's Tom Kenny, it's Mr. Lawrence, it's myself, it's Jill Talley, Steve Little, uh, Linda Wallum, who was our original, uh, the doctor with the hook. Oh my gosh, why am I forgetting her name? Kay! Uh, she came back to reprise her role. Um, so it's the original cast. It's Joe Murray. It's, uh, it's really well done. It really, we had to kind of go back and see if the old band could still play the instruments again. And we did a good job. It's beautifully done. People really, really love it. Was it exciting to be back in the room with those legends again? Yeah, man. I, I always thought he was like an old rock and roll guy. I was like, yeah, he was like Pink Floyd coming together again for the No Excuses Hunger concert, right? <laughs> Although we didn't have a, a Roger Waters getting mad at everybody, but it was like David Gilmour was there, Rick Wright, Nick Mason were all together again on stage and were doing this thing again. It was, it was lovely, right? We could still play. I remember the songs we used to play. It was like, it was, that's what it felt like. And we were all these old seasoned rock musicians coming back yeah. together again. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, I love it. That's amazing. That's amazing. And you have a lot of other um, projects in production, um, stuff that um, you have a new series in production. Um, yeah, a, a couple of new series. Can, can, you, can you talk about yes. any of those ones? I'm on the Fabulous what Show with Casa Grande. Are we good? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm yes, on the Fabulous Show with Lillian Show. We just did 100 episodes Casa called Grandes. The Casa Grandes. Mm -hmm. With Isabella Alvarez, uh, Alex Cáceres, uh, Roxana Ortega, Ruben Garfia, Leah Gold, so many more, uh, Sunil, uh, Sumali Montano, uh, oh Eric gosh, Lopez. Eugenio, uh, Eugenio's last name from Mexico, a great comic. He's on the series, uh, created by yeah. Miguel Puga and uh, Lalo Alcaraz and, and a bunch of other people. And it's a great series. I play Carlos, who's the dad, and he knows everything about everything. You know, back in 1944, the Mayans actually, and I play a parrot named uh, Sergio. Oh, por favor, don't do this to me again. Great. No more tacos. <laughs> and then I play my favorite character. There's a guy named Vito Filipponio. And Vito is the friends with uh, Abuelito, named Hector. And I just come by the store all the time, the bodega, and I go, hey, uh, if you guys got any extra fruit that you're going to throw away, I wouldn't mind eating it. He's almost like Fauci. <laughs> Vito's like, almost like a Fauci. So I love playing Vito. I'm on a new series on Netflix called Trece, thanks to the amazing Eric Bauza, who recommended me to be a part of this Filipino uh, comic book, Come to Life. And I play Anton Trece, who is the father of Alexa, Alexis, Alexa Trece. And I play San Telmo, who is the voice of this fire who comes out of the phone. Yes, you summon me. And they put effects on it. And it's beautiful. It's this beautiful graphic novel. It's called Trese, T-R-E-S-E. It's on Netflix. So happy to be a part of that. I got to be the voice for Miguelito because the original voice of Miguelito on uh, Victor and Valentino decided that it would be more fair for someone with a Latin background to pursue this. And so I got an opportunity to... Hey, hi, there's me, Miguelito. So I'm, I'm getting to recreate a voice that somebody already did on that. I'm on Camp Coral. I play a little hockey up here. And then Lobby and he's like, oh, we don't get to go over there, huh? And then I play this guy named Harvey. He's like, you guys, you guys, you are being invaded by aliens. I swear, <laughs> this time it's real. So that's a fun <laughs> character. I'm on Camp Coral. I get to do uh, Lego City with a... Uh, with uh, wow. Roger, Roger Craig Smith, and with Jeff Bennett, and with, uh, oh my gosh, she works at the Magic Castle. Why am I forgetting her name? She's wonderful. Misty Lee. Misty Lee, uh, a whole great cast. So I'm getting to be a part of a, 
of a lot of fun things right now. Oh, I'm really lucky. Amazing. Yeah. I'm really lucky. Yeah. And you're a producer. And it's as fun well. to work on. Okay. Huh? Continue. Go, go back. Sorry. No, it's, fu it's fun to be directed by Tom Kenny on Camp Coral because Tom is, yeah. is has unbounded energy. It's like, and he gets every detail, every fish in the background that's like going, oh my God. So Tom will be, oh, okay, Carlos. Uh, the fish uh, sees uh, the, the giant, giant curl and goes, ah, and then trips and goes, G -g -g -g, and then goes, oh my God. Okay, so do it. And then like, he's so detailed and so energetic. You're like, Tom, it's nine in the morning. I can't keep up with you, you know? <laughs> and he's done three shows at the farmer's market the night before. And it's incredible to to work on that show. And um, but I'm sorry, you were you were talking about something else. Oh, I was just going to switch gears, but I, I I'm really I'm curious also, you know, for you know for you to continue just like with working with Tom and and um, Camp Coral and you know your experience on that. How is it? I just love you know, it. Yeah, especially without Stephen Hillenburg um, yeah. being a part of the series. Stephen is a guy I met on Rocco. In Rock, I met Stephen Hilleberg in what, what, 1992 in Studio City. That was where the original Nick Studios was on. Uh, was pretty close to, uh, I would say, Colfax and Riverside was the original Nick Studio. Then it moved to Vineland. And the, the person that was the receptionist was Maria Bamford. She was the no receptionist way. at Nickelodeon. Oh, hi, how are you? Oh yeah, um, sure. I'll let them know you're here. And you're like, you knew that she was brilliant. And I first, her first voiceover gig, I think, was with me on Cat Dog. She played one of the one of the greases and she talked like this. And she was so not confident with her characters on that. And I'm like, Maria, you're brilliant. And of course, she is brilliant and she's amazing. But um, so to see these guys again, and, and I, you know, we all missed what Steve Hillenburg brought to Rocco what he brought to Spongebob and it's one of the sad things really is that you get these sort of diehard Spongebob fans that are so uh, accusatory of this is not what Steven Hilleberg would have wanted it's like guys Tom and Bill Fogerbaki and Doug Lawrence knew Steven and his family a lot closer than you did believe me everything that's happening with these later versions of SpongeBob and these later versions of Camp Coral, of course, Steve Hillenburg would have loved it. You, you think for a second how much love that Tom and I and Bill Fogerbaki and Roger Bumpus and Carolyn Lawrence and the directors and the producers have for Steve Hillenburg? Do you think for a second they would? They know his wife. They know his son. Do you think for a yeah. second they would go against what he wanted? No, and it's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate part of our business where people think they know. There's no way Steve Hillenbury, and it's just so sad. But of course, because we're continuing what he brought. Of course, Tom loves him and his family. Of course, Bill. And so, you guys, yeah. you have to say, you, this is where you got to like step back. You, we know your fans. But you don't know the creator as well as Tom and Bill and Roger and Carolyn and, and Doug. You, 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 you know, so please just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. There's be two, great there can be two things can exist at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can have the original SpongeBob, the newer SpongeBob, the Patrick show, Camp Coral. It's all because of this guy who started... Uh, that I knew on Rocco's Modern Life, along with Dan Povenmire and Swampy Marsh, who created Phineas, Phineas and Ferb. It's all part of Steve. It's still all Steve Hillenberg. It's still more than okay with his wife and his son and his family and the people closest to him. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. It's No, it is. I, I really encourage you to just enjoy it. It's wonderful and it's fantastic. Uh, that was a PSA I think I had to do because it, it, I guess in, in a sense, it hurts our feelings to think that we yeah. would do this, you know, to, to think that the, cre that the people that are putting this on, they're doing it out of love and out of really knowing who this person was, really, really yeah. knowing them on, a, on him on a personal level. So that's my big PSA for that. Yeah, 100%. And um, 
I guess, you know, if people watch a show long enough, maybe they feel like they have ownership for, yeah. for some reasons. And, and maybe in some way they do. But knowing that the show is only able to continue when the parties involved that have the copyright and have that, you know, are agreeing. You can't just go renegade and try and make and, and I get that sense, Right. I get that sense of having ownership over something or a familiarity that you think is real. Mm -hmm. I remember walking into uh, L.A. Studios to do uh, Phineas and Ferb <laughs> for Swampy Marsh. And I walk in and I see this move, a woman there. And I know her. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? How's it going? And I look at her and I go, oh, my God, that's Lucy Davis from the British office who played Dawn. And, of course, is now in the uh, 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 Teenage Witch, Sabrina, on Netflix. It's one of, one of my guilty pleasures. And I thought I knew her. Yeah, I, I was so I love the British office, so familiar with her <laughs> that I thought I knew her as a person. And of course yeah. I didn't. And I went, I don't know you, but I love your work, you know, <laughs> and I'll yeah. tell you how I understand how people are fans of what we do and how it's such a big deal for them. Mm -hmm. We both know Fred Tattashore and Dee Bradley Baker, amazing voice actors. Yeah, but. I'm sitting there at Salami Studios lamenting the fact that I'm horrible at video games. And I say, the only game I know how to play, first-person shooter, first of all, Left 4 Dead 1, uh, Vince Valenzuela from Seattle plays Francis in that, blown away. So I tell okay. D, and there's, we're having a conversation with D and Fred, and I go, I play Left 4 Dead 2, and, and D goes, you know I'm the spitter. And Fred goes, you know I play Boomer, and I'm like, no way! No way! Oh my God! You no way! And I fanboyed out. I totally because I spent hours on this game, and I know Boomer, and I know yeah. the Spitter, and the Joker that jumps on their your head and goes, <laughs> and I'm like, of course it's D, of course it's Fred, but I fanboyed out, and that's when it hit me that people really get invested in what we do. Because they spend yeah. so much time with us. One of the, the, the greatest compliments I get is from Spyro. I was the original Spyro. Mm -hmm. Me, right. Tom Kenny, Jess Harnell, and Elijah Wood, I believe. But I was the original Spyro. Hey, watch out for Nasty Nork. And people <laughs> come up to me and go, you were my childhood. And I really didn't understand it until I understand, understood how much I was a fan of D and Fred now. For being in this game that I love so I get it wow. I get that sense yeah. of ownership and um, do you have an all-time favorite character for you that, to, to voice that's a great question you know it, ha it has to be my first which is Rocco because mm. it was just so germane to who I was I was this innocent guy and I really didn't know what I was <laughs> doing voice otherwise and Charlie was this big intimidating, oh, Rocco, I've been on Broadway and been doing voices for years. <laughs> and so we were so green. I revere Rocco. I love, and I talked about this today. I just sent this to Justin. I do a series on Instagram called How I Came Up With a Voice. Yeah, yeah, Which is, yeah. as you know, it's sort of a misnomer. It's, it's, usually it's collaborative. But one of the things I've enjoyed for since 2001 is doing sounded like stuff for Mike Wazowski because yeah. that presents its own challenge. You know, I got to play him in Kingdom Hearts 3 and a bunch of games, you know, because, of, you know, because Billy Crystal has created this brilliant original vase that you're trying to replicate and get every detail right. And sometimes you nail it and sometimes you're just off. But that's the challenge, right? To, to get people to believe that if they're playing Kingdom Hearts 3, that it's seamless for them. Like, you know, Raj, you're looking good today. Ah, Sully, watch out. That thing is coming for us. You know, that's our <laughs> job. And so I, I love to be able to do that as well. Yeah, that's amazing. So um, people can just make sure that they're following you on Instagram and then you do the series from time to time. Yeah. Is it on TikTok too? It, yeah, we put little clips of it on TikTok to get people to come over and see the full clips. Ah. So it's both of the, uh, and it lags behind a little bit. So uh, I've done Got everything it. from the Taco Bell dog to Laszlo to Ricochet from Mucha Lucha. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing Billy Crystal. I love Crocker. I love Laszlo because he was so innocent. Yeah. Hey, Scoutmaster Lopez. And Clem was, 
Uh, yeah, the Taco Bell dog was so famous. Yo quiero Taco right. Bell. Viva Gorditas. I was on Hollywood Square sitting underneath Whoopi Goldberg and actually got to hear, I'll take Carlos Ellis Rocky for the block. You know, talk about surreal. You know, I met Sugar Ray Leonard on that show. I, Yeah, so I've had, you know, but Rocco, when we got to make, you know, if I had to go back and if we could do one series again between Fairly Odd Parents and Rocco, I love them both. I think I would choose to do Rocco again. Because we need Rocco. Rocco's Winnie the Pooh. He's, he's hope springs eternal, right? Things are difficult, yeah. but we'll find a way around it. You know? He's so sweet. So, because Crocker's like out of his mind. Crocker's at an 11 all the time. <laughs> and like, I get exhausted. And Rocco has nuance and he's sweet and he's laid back. So I love Rocco. Yeah, sorry. I, somebody's commenting that there's a lot of chirping going on over here. I know it's super loud. My birds are in the background. Remember when loud, but... COVID first hit and everybody truly was in lockdown? lockdown yeah. The freeways weren't busy. How loud nature was? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's something we can. Still pretty loud here. Yeah. <laughs> still pretty loud. Um, awesome. Well, I want to save time to take a few questions from the studio audience. Sure. Um, okay. We did Brick Man Mosaic. We did talk about, um, Carlos's thoughts on the live action, Fairly Odd Parents, which is, he'd make a fantastic Mr. Crocker. Um, hey, let me see. Let's see if I can... Okay. Um, how was it, uh, being the voice of Monroe on Juniper Lee? What a cartoon. Judd Winnick, who I met with William Morris in 1994, we did a cartoon of his, and I forgot, but I played a clown who said, use by number. Judd's from the Bay Area. He created this show, The Life and Times of Juniper Lee, Lara, Lara Jo Miller, Kath Susie. Oh, my God, so many wonderful actors. I don't remember them all. But he wanted this guy, Monroe, and, and it was more Billy, it was more Billy Connolly. He's higher pitched than Dogger Days from Dragon's Rescue Rider. So I knew Billy Connolly and he was just curmudgeon -y. Juniper, I've told you a thousand times not to check your wrist during school. <laughs> and just lovely because it was so inventive and there's monsters and there's portals and there's wonderful acting. And I love playing Monroe. And I love the life and times of Juniper Lee. It was so brilliant. I wish that would come back. So well done. And Judd, Second. Judd, uh, of course, wrote Hilo, the children's book series, which if your son hasn't read Hilo, it's about a boy robot from space. And it's that whole Hilo series it. is so good. Judd's amazing. Thank you for the tip. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, it's, it's funny. Um, piggybacking off that, um, Tamir had asked, um, you're known for your Scottish accents, but you're also good with an Irish accent. Now, they're easy to mix up. How do you distinguish them? Well, oh God, there's a, there's a freshness. He does a spot on Conor McGregor. But I'll do the typical Irish thing where I think Irish is more swallowed. So it's more, a uh -huh. little bit more sing-songy for me. And then you get the stereotypical Irish, which I get to play on Looney Tunes. Ah, life rabbit, I know you're in there. Come on out for questioning. <laughs> to me, Irish is more swallowed as opposed to Scottish, which is less swallowed. It's more, Scottish to me is more guttural and they're harder. So let me say a sentence in a Scottish accent. Let me buy you a drink. I suppose, let me buy you a drink. Let me buy you a drink. Right. Scottish to me is more back, back of the throat a little bit. More back of <laughs> the throat, more swallowed. If, if I had to say in, in my unprofessional opinion, it's more swallowed. That is Scottish. That's how I differentiate. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah. Let's see. Christopher Cora asked, how did you like doing American Dad? We didn't talk about how you work on American Dad or Family Guy. Yeah, Mr. Weed was a, a blast. <laughs> Recently on <laughs> Family Guy again. or American Dad, I just played Henderson. I played this guy from Arizona who plays the voice of this guy's consciousness. Or is he? Or could it be a ruse? But he talks like this. I'm Henderson. I think you remember me. Uh, so that's my most recent one. Smaller roles on that, but I was Mr. Weed on Family Guy. Peter, you're fired. And that was originally Butch and Seth MacFarlane had come from 
I think Cow and Chicken and uh, Hanna Barbera stuff. And so Butch was playing Mr. Weed originally, and then they wanted a Spanish Portuguese guy. I knew Linda Linda Lamontane from the San Francisco Comedy Competition, and we no started way. skydiving together. We were going through our skydiving lessons. She stopped. I continued and skydived for 15 years, but I knew Linda. And so they, I came in for a general and then I got to be a part of this Mr. Weed for Fox. Fox didn't pick it up. And then TNT picked it up and I was part of that. No, reverse. And then Fox picked it up again. And I remember it was really high pressure for Seth MacFarlane because he had to get it right. So he was really overworked. It wasn't as enjoyable because he wasn't set yet. So, but it was great to be a part of that franchise. You know, Peter, you're fired. I should call you Eduardo. People really revere that character as well. So it happened so quick and then he died and then that was it. And then I came back for a little uh, episode where they go back in time and Mr. Weed is still alive. And they've kept <laughs> me around. Uh, Catherine and Jackie have been really wonderful about bringing me in for smaller roles and I continue to be a part of that. And it's awesome. That is awesome. Wow. Um, okay, we talked about some um, This is a great question, um, which is just, how does it feel uh, to be a voice actor from popular cartoons that inspired people today from their childhood? It feels great, you know? I would say the same, I get to meet June Foray and record a, a, a live reading of uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Our doctor knew June Foray, and she, he brought me, Joe Alaski, and Tom Kenny into his living room on a couch with June Foray. And so as much as she inspired me, it feels great that I'm able to be a person that can pass that on to somebody else. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully they're a fan and they, they might emulate what I've done. And cause I continue to emulate what uh, Billy West has done with Jess Harnell, Rob, you know, Tress McNeil. I, I remember doing the Animaniacs recently and I jokingly said that this was my make a wish winning uh, ticket oh. that I got to act with Jess and Tress and Rob Paulson in the same room. Mo was not there that day, but you know, so yeah, we're all passing it on to each other. We all pass it down. And Tom Kenny, right? And and Bill Fogerbaki and these guys. I'm 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 lucky. Roger Bumpus and we're just lucky to work with these people. Oh, that is amazing. Um, well, I think we're about to wrap it up. We just have one more question for you, Carlos, which is a question yeah. I like to ask everybody, which, which is, is there, if there is a song in your heart, what would the name of that song be? You got to keep trying, I think. You got to keep trying. Okay. You got to keep trying. I love it. You got to keep living. I don't know how it would go, but it would be sung by Michael Kiwanuka who I really think is amazing. Yeah. I think we could make that like a, a trend. Or the Black Pumas. <laughs> got to keep The Black Pumas, who are also amazing. Eric, Eric Burton and uh, Quesada. Adrian Commission. Quesada and Eric Burton. Yeah, there you go. Go see Aww. the Black Pumas. Well, well, um, got to keep on trying. Got to keep on trying. Yeah, and that's probably your advice to anybody out there who's aspiring yeah. uh, voice actors as well, right? Got to keep on yeah. trying. Yeah, and we have people ask that question um, every week, and I tell people that everybody's story is different, uh, mm -hmm. how they got into voice acting, whether it was stand-up comedy or improv or uh, radio or however they found their way to use their voice um, to tell stories. Um, everybody's mm -hmm. story is different, so you get to write your own. Yeah, you know? I, was a, I was an athlete growing up, loved sports. I didn't do drama at all, and then I got sucked into stand-up comedy and mime and off I went and no, no professional training. And I, like you, I've been learning from day one when we stepped in and saw Charlie Adler tearing up that copy and then working with Billy West and Dwight Schultz and Maria Bamford and Jim Cummings. I watched, I watched, I watched Tara Strong. I watched Gray Delisle. I watched Darren Norris. I watched Suzanne Blakely and Kari Walgren. I watched you. We're in looping groups. I watch how people work and I pick up stuff. You, ne you never stop learning. I watch Tom Kenny, Doug Lawrence, you know, Roger, Carolyn Lawrence. You watch and you just see what they do that you're not doing and going, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that. That's an awesome. I'm going to do that now. So keep watching, Aww. keep learning. Keep watching, keep learning. Carlos, thank you so much for spending um, your evening with us. And um, you're welcome, I'm so Allison. excited to check out everybody.
go ahead and follow at Witness Infection. I mean, I'm sure you're probably already following Carlos, but, um, and he's on TikTok as well, putting out some hilarious, amazing videos. Um, next week, we have Richard Epcar, uh, voice actor and voice director, is going to be our guest on the show. So I hope you guys come back for that and make sure you're following me if you want. Um, we do these every single week. So, um, yeah. Okay, Carlos. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Allison. That was great. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. Bye.